So it looks like we have another one of Ian's uh, cups. Guilt and misery, friendship is certainly the finest balm for the pangs of disappointed love. Ian, this is a sad coffee cup he's got here. Ian, don't forget your coffee cup. Oh, thanks, buddy. Ian's coffee cups are always littered about. No, the one time he had like a cornerstone coffee cup, which is like the church I go oh, to, yeah. he had no idea what cornerstone was, he just had the cup. <laughs> yeah, just like, like cool, Ian's Ian. Hello Kitty cup and all his other ones. So Carmen's gonna show me how to this works. We're down here in I-Beam today and Carmen is going to explain to me and to us how kind of each component fits in with the uh, Beer Tech Fusion Chamber um, and specifically with how this lead shield, like what the role this lead radiation shield plays in our experiment as well as the vacuums and stuff. So basically you're going to just give me the whole overview, right? Kind of just a rundown of everything that's going to go down. Sweet. Yeah, so this is our um, mechanical wrapping pump. Um, so, okay. This will get the vacuum down about 99% of the way. And then we have our second um, turbo pump right here. This will get us um, the rest of the way. And that last 1% that we're trying to get down in the vacuum is extremely important. Just to make sure our air, the air in here is completely out. Um, we don't want our helium particle coming in and hitting other atoms that would be, or, or particles that would be in here um, and creating fusion inside of the chamber that isn't actually what we're trying to test. That would just- Oh, okay. Um, it would just contaminate it. Contaminate our data. Okay. Further. So, okay. So because the helium is coming through so fast and so quick, basically it's primed to fuse with anything. So if there's just air in here and like random molecules and particles just floating around it's just gonna mess the, the whole thing up mm -hmm. so by getting all the air out through these pumps it just makes sure that there's like nothing in there other than clean, yeah. what we want yep. okay so we get it as low as possible the vacuum will be as low as possible um, so it's interesting to me like realizing that so much of this apparatus is all about just like purifying purifying what we want to test and we only, only that want to measure the gamma that is coming off of that nuclear fusion. Okay, so so like we can isolate what we're launching, right? And we can isolate the substrate as long as we clear everything out, and in then its path, yes. in its path, and then also because that's what this purpose of this thing is too. Yeah, that's just to eliminate like outside. So the particles that are okay. around us that the radiation may be um, getting through and contaminating the data. Is Show me how this whole cup assembly thing works. Yeah. So the lead shield, what was it like making that? Like, how did you guys do that? So basically we made a cast. Um, we made like a, a mold that we poured it into. That took a while. But there's like a seam where the two parts go together. We had to make sure it was pretty close in measurements to exactly the size of what it was going to go in couldn't have it any bigger or any smaller than this exact piece. Um, okay. And I was noticing like, wow, it fits in there so perfectly, but that's obviously been yeah, engineered to fit exactly. so well. <laughs> yes. So I remember you, we just like melted this down on like a turkey fryer. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was like soup and then we just poured it in. It took, how long did it take to cool? I think it took a long time. I mean, this is, that was how many months ago? And this is the first time I've ever even seen yeah, the result we did this of what we did. Yeah. This. I guess I don't want to touch this because that's. Yes, this is what. Don't you touch got it. your gloves on so that you don't. It looks like from right here. It looks like a big metal roll of toilet paper. <laughs> Does. <laughs> she ask Carmen why she's wearing gloves. Yeah. So you're wearing gloves. Yeah. Why are you wearing gloves, Carmen? Because this is um, made out of lead, and uh, you don't want to overexpose yourself to lead just because it is radioactive. Heavy metal. It is heavy metal. <laughs> Oh, a heavy metal. The issue is, is that if you handle it a whole lot, like someone like Carmen does, and she's not only handling it, she even she made this casting. And so if you handle it a whole bunch, uh, uh, then you stand a much higher chance of getting contamination. So because she has so much more exposure, she needs to take it to an extra extra high level. And it's exposure from the radiation that this thing's emitting, right? Yep. What is the exposure from? The lead itself. Like if you were to lick this, it'd give you a little bit of lead poisoning. So, oh. Yeah, uh, lead is a heavy metal, 
and heavy metals are uh, very toxic. It's not the fact that it's radioactive, it's just toxic in and of itself. That's exactly right. Oh, exactly. Okay, exactly. Cool. And then this thing right here is the actual detector, right? Yes. So this will measure the energy of the gammas coming off. Okay, and this like purifies the data essentially, or like yes. make sure that we're only measuring exactly. what we want to measure from here. So it seems to me, and I guess the big takeaway is like so much of this system is all about purifying the data that we have, right? So from the radiation shield, which blocks excess radiation out just in the atmosphere that could contaminate the data, as well as clearing out various molecules just in the air that would be inside the chamber, we get all of that out through these vacuums, exactly. right? It's funny how like I work on this thing all the time where I like I film you guys talking about it all the time, but there's just now so many particles, like so many particles, so many pieces <laughs> of it that you have to put together. Yeah. Um, but like seeing how it all works together makes sense. And then this is, what do we call this? A piece of, a two by four? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, and then we got some more wood down, down there. So this that's, is, uh, that's the epitome of ingenuity. Oak right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's a nice piece. That's a nice two by four if that's <laughs> oak. And this is uh, holding up this beam line. Okay. Okay. Cool. Beer cake fusion chamber, the, the apparatus detailing, 2K17. Where's Ian? Let's find Ian. Oh yeah. Here's the other shield. Yeah. And this one I can touch because it's painted. It's painted. So Ian, yeah. are you watching yourself, Ian? I'm actually checking it out. Here's what's <laughs> awesome. Look, bam, it updated from uh, the subscribers we just got. It's now oh. 64? 56. Oh. 56. 56 like subs from 23 yesterday. Once they That's find amazing. out about this, this is so heavy, <laughs> then they're going to really That's subscribe. Right. So that one you can hold by hand. So uh, how come we didn't use this one? Uh, well, so me and Neil, we'd like to embellish on our paint work a little bit. And Did it make it too big? We had to like recoat paint on and we built it up the paint got so thick it doesn't fit anymore oh man yeah but it looks pretty so. it's very pretty yeah and there's a little sparky guy a little there. sparky guy there all right we're headed back to the shop now carmen just gave the tutorial the rundown the rundown the red rum down and then uh we're gonna talk about uh the paint job that we're gonna give the radiation shield yeah it needs a complete makeover HGTV radiation shield makeover. I don't know, let's do um mentioned cow prints in the past. Never done a cow print before. That would be cool. Um so cow print could work. Cow print, um I literally okay, broke my phone. You can go camera. But I had pictures. Hello everybody. So I've I found my little corner where I can come and talk to the camera talk to you guys in private and I don't feel like people are watching me. Uh, oh, hello, Ian. Ian, Ian found me in my, my secret corner. <laughs> so after much deliberation, we have not yet figured out what the paint job is going to be for the lead shield, but stay tuned. I'm sure we will talk about it soon um, once it happens. And I think Ian is gonna do that this weekend. But thank you for watching. Thank you for following along, listening to our dialogues, our back and forths. Hopefully it was informative. Um, for me, like I had said before, the takeaway or what was interesting was that how many other things need to be taken care of in order to make sure that the readings that we're getting are accurate. Um, so much of the process is being able to read the fusion or being able to make sure that we're only fusing what we want to fuse. So. That's kind of, that was our main purpose in this video. Um, I think that's it, stay tuned. There's gonna be some videos that Ian's gonna post that are the more hardcore science aspect of it for those of you who are interested, so check those out. The next video we're gonna do is talking about why the beer keg, you know, why specifically the beer keg is advantageous to us. Like why we would choose to use a beer keg and it's not just for clickbait, it's not just for a gimmicky title. There is a purpose and we're gonna talk about that. We're still small in numbers, but we hope that as we keep going and as we keep making videos that we will develop a community here and people are gonna be interested in what we're doing. So thank you and good night or good day or good morning or whatever time you're watching this, have a good one.
Bye, everybody.